into your time in New Zealand Rugby League. So 2009, you had the opportunity to, you know, take a take a chance to represent your your heritage, the new the, the Kiwis, yeah. the Marys. And you had a bit of a funny moment there in your induction when you had to do a bit of a hucker. And um, yeah, 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 a bit yeah. of an embar- embarrassing and- moment. They thought it was the worst hucker. Yeah. Than- <laughs> yeah, Andy, old Flint, Flinty. Yeah, you look, look. Yeah, I, I was, uh, that was a real honour to be picked up. That was after, uh, I think that might have been my first tour was 2008, might have been 2008. But um, yeah, I went on that tour and I had to go early. I had to fly to the UK and set up the training in France and, and some other places. So I was actually over there on my own, which meant um, I didn't get to come in with all the other guys. And when you join the national team, um, you do a haka. So, uh, you know, and I was back in the days of Blair and Benji. And so I had the real, real, you know, some hardcore, some some hardcore guys there with me. uh, Great, great servants of the game at that time. And um, so we were in, uh, we were in England and I forget which the field was, you know, fields are fields now to me, but, (laughs) and, uh, and they got me and they said, right, you know, you've got to do your hucker. And I was on my own, you know, so, which is quite embarrassing because the rest of my family, their cup of hucker and their tall Maori is absolutely spot on. I'm the only one who's you know, a bit off <laughs> because I've been here for 30 years. But anyway, no excuses. But um, so I got out there and they said to me, oh, no, he won't have to do it on his own because Flinty's there, you know. And Flint, he, now, he was helping us um, uh, get everything together. Great fellow. Went on to have a really great career himself in, in New Zealand. Anyway, so he jumps in with me, right? So here I am. He's a pasty palm next to me with his shirt off and his undies. <laughs> there I am with my undies, right? And there's a Benji's looking at me just saying, what what tribe are you from? Because he doesn't, my arms are going all over the place. And, um, you know, we do this haka, the boys, are, and they often like to grab your clothes and run off with them. But I'm such a I'm such a, a, an evil squaring up bastard that they didn't take mine. But, um, or, or I was just, had such a bad rig that they thought, get it covered up as fast as possible. One of them. <laughs> but anyway, they're bloody buggers. They voted, they blo- voted him one of the best they'd seen and I was the worst. And to get that, you know, I, I never told my nephew that he's, he's, he's one of the leaders in, in Kapahaka in New Zealand. So we keep that one a secret. <laughs> and so New Zealand holds a lot of importance to you and your family. Um, you grew up in a family of seven, seven kids. Yep. Yeah. Um, you joined the Royal Navy in 1984 at the ripe old age of 17. Yeah. Yeah. I only just, just turned. I, actually, I don't think I was 17 yet, but um, yeah, look, hey, that, that, that made me there. You know, I, um, I, I went in there, the whole family, all the males on my side of the family, right up into to my, my generation have all served. And um, my, my uh, older brother, he only just got out. He did about 24 years. Um, you know, I didn't do that many, but yeah. Um, the, my years there, um, they, they really did make me, they shaped me. Um, I like to think I was a good bloke with a lot going for me before I joined there, but um, that really did put a bit of finesse and, and toughness to me and give me a, a lot of direction. So um, yeah, my years there and with, with those men and women that I served with, uh, and, 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 you know, Buck Shalford, who was an all black at the time, he was one of my PTIs. And so we really, um, yeah, that was a real, a, 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 probably one one of the best foundation pillars uh, of me as a, as a, as a human being. And you say, you say, you so see your father actually served as well. Um, yeah. But you testament yeah. a lot of the discipline, respect, um, the strength of character, your work ethic. You t- testament that to your, to your mother. Um, yeah. Like your father. She was. Yeah. Kind of- yeah. Look, dad just had that about him. Like every time we looked at him, you know, he was a stoic soldier, you know, dad, Mum, mum, mum was the mum was the one who just said, "You are what you are, but be the best at what that is." And you know, and mum was Maori, uh, dad was Pakeha, and and um, you know, uh, mum, mum did the hard yards because yeah, dad, dad, dad was a bit of a warmonger, so if there was a war, he'd take off and get over there. And so uh, love him the bits and love mum, of course, and dad loved us, and so did mum. But um, mum, mum was the one who really, um, really kept us on the straight and narrow with with. There's lots of ways you can go, as you know, anyone, not even me as a Māori, but any, any kids, there's always lots of different ways you can go. Um, but she she ruled with a firm hand, but 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 it was fair. And um, and if she got me for nothing, you know, I knew I was going to do something later, so so it would all square up. But, um, you know, I, I, I lost mum at the beginning of this year and even up to that day, um, before that day, we would all gather and, and laugh and talk about, you know, the, the punishments we deserved and the ones we copped, which um, 
we just put in the bank for later. But uh, you know, mum, mum, the way mum lived, the way mum raised us, um, you know, and and obviously dad's dad's um, just just dad's whole presence. But mum was the one that told us, you know, yeah, you, whatever you got to do, yeah, be the best, be the best at it.